Hello YouTube, it's me Sean. Um, I am going to be doing a video about my clinical experience and week. Um, this is what this video was about, and um, yeah, because I'm right now I'm procrastinating. I have um, a clinical care map to do, and it's a lot less um, tedious than what we had to do in my first semester of nursing which were the care plans, and you had to, like, basically make a care plan for somebody, but it had, it had to be detailed. You had to have so many interventions, blah, blah, blah. Now, we just have to, like, it's just very simple, straight to the point. You can do it mm, maybe hour, hour and a half, two, maybe. Before, the care plan took hours. Like, oh, my God. And me, last semester, I used to do stuff at the last minute, and then, like, the morning that it was due well I would finish it the morning that it was due and you had to go through your Sparks and Taylor nursing diagnosis book and find nursing diagnosis for your patient mm -hmm. um, so yeah so I always do this I always waste time um, so anyway yeah um, but yeah, so I have to do my care map. I don't know which patient I'm going to do it on yet because um, I just don't know. It's, you know, I want to be able, I want to make sure I have all the information for each one, each patient that I had this week. So, okay. So, number one, I went to my OR observation and that was awesome. Um, it, OR is very busy and you have to wear a mask, which you tie up here, then you tie it on your neck. And you gotta wear their scrubs. I call it being a member of the green club because they have green scrubs. You have to wear blue shoe coverings and a blue bonnet. And I got to see two hysterectomies. Now, a hysterectomy, or you know what that is, it's when they take out the um, uh, uterus. And sometimes the ovaries and the fallopian tubes, but both surgeons didn't take out the ovaries and the fallopian tubes. So, this... When they pulled it out, it peeks out like this. Sorry, guys. If any guys watch my videos. But it peeks out like that. You know, you see it and it's like, what the heck? Then they pull it out and it looks like this is a Chipotle napkin. But it looks like... Uh, no. Maybe a little bigger than this. It looks, I think it looks like a chicken leg. Seriously, I'm not even going to lie. A drumstick. Sorry if I just ruined your chicken meal. But, yeah, that's what it looks like. And it's just crazy because, you know, your uterus when you're pregnant, it stretches, like, really big. But it's really not that big to begin with anyway. So it's really crazy. Um. So, yeah. But I saw that. And basically the nurse, what she does is assist the... A surgical tech like and get because you know once they set up a sterile field um you can't turn your back on the sterile field you can't cross contaminate um like you really have to be careful that you don't recontaminate because anything you do really like when you put on sterile gloves hands like this unless you're touching what you need to be touching so um so yeah so the nurse just you know her hands are washed and everything, and she goes, you know, and gets everything for the search tech if the search tech, you know, forgot something or needed something extra or whatever. And she just makes sure the patient is safe and, um, you know, everything goes like it's supposed to and, you know, just being a patient advocate while the patient is vulnerable. And so, yeah, <clears throat> and they, you know, they laugh, they talk, and I'm like, okay, we're doing a hysterectomy, your guys are like laughing talking I mean they weren't like cracking up laughing or joking around but you know they made they okay they weren't laughing laughing but you know chuckles or whatever and they were like talking and joking you know just about different stuff and I'm like wow I would be so like oh my god okay what do I gotta do now you know so focused but that's only because I don't have any experience and they do but yeah that experience was fun interesting I learned a lot um and also, let's see, I did, oh, today I had a patient who had a really nasty, icky wound. She had MRSA. And um, she, it was like, 
a real deep wound. She had surgery on her sternum, and it had never closed up. And so I guess MRSA set in her, um, set into the wound. So then they had to do an I and D, and I forget what the I stands for, but the D is for um, drainage. And I I can't remember for the life of me what the I is, but they're gonna like try to basically just go in there and kind of clean it out, wash it out, open it back up, and, so it can heal. And um, but yeah, she was pretty interesting. And um, the patient, why well, did have a patient Tuesday? Cause I was in the OR. Um, and then the last one I had, my patient was kind of, she had pneumonia. She was an elderly lady and kind of not with it at all. So I really don't know who I'm going to do my care map on, but, um, we'll see. Okay. And then I went for my job interview today and, um, yeah, it went good. I got hired and I'm making a lot of money, like, like I've ever made in my working career. And actually, for my last job, I'm making like for my base rate, I'm making um a dollar and seven sixty nine yeah sixty nine cents more. And it's twelve hour shifts, eleven eleven to twelve hour shifts, and it's very very flexible with my school schedule. Like oh my god, like. They, the way he was explaining it to me, like, basically, I'll call them at the beginning of the week, and I'll be like, hey, I'm available to work on, let's say, Saturday and Sunday. They'll say, okay, now, let's say something changes, so then I can call them back on Wednesday and be like, hey, um, as long as I'm not scheduled, I can change my availability for that week. So then I'll call back, or let's say I don't call back, so then they'll call me up when they have a case or whatever, and then I'll go. But if they don't have a case or they don't feel, you know, then that's the only thing. Like, if they don't have a case or anything for those two days, then I probably won't get scheduled. Or, um, let's say, um, let's see, I won't get scheduled for that. I forget what I was even talking about. Lost my train of thought. Mm. Yeah, I really don't have minutes, seconds to waste. But yeah, so basically, they're really flexible. And, oh, and I don't have to like, what if I don't call them and tell them my um, availability, they're going to assume that I'm just not available to work. So they won't call and harass me like, hey, do you want to pick up? Hey, do you want to come in? Hey, do you want to come in? Nope, nope, nope. I said it all by myself. And I'm really happy about that because next semester I'll be doing two um, eight-hour clinicals. So basically like on Monday I'll have OB lecture. And then on Tuesday I might have like, I don't know, let's OB clinicals. Then on Wednesday, I'll have uh, psych, um, mental health, um, nursing lecture. And then on Thursday or Friday, I'll have the clinical. And they're eight-hour clinicals. Now, my only question is, like, I wonder how much paperwork do we have to do for eight hours? Because for four hours or three hours, the first semester and four hours, were, it's not as bad on this semester. But last first semester was kind of, like, tedious. So I wonder, but, but yeah, so that's that. I, um, I'm really excited. I'm really happy. I recognized a beta blocker today, like right off, you know, I was like, and that's good news because I would farm test on Wednesday and yeah, I really need to pass. Like I'm not failing that class, but if I don't pass, yeah, I will be on the failing side. Well, close to it. So but I will pass. I'm not, um, I'm not, um, worried about it too much. And, um, yeah. And so, um, oh, and my new book that I got, that I told you guys I got for nursing, um, I don't have my book bag upstairs, which sucks because I gotta go get it. But anyways, the med surge review and rationales, literally, like, I opened that book up in class and highlighted everything. Well, most things that we talked about. Not everything is covered in um, the, the review and rationale. So, but I mean, that book is not meant to replace our textbook. It's just to supplement it. So, excuse me. That's, um, so that's good news. Like, um, I don't care. Like, but at least, you know, I can get what I need from it. And that's all that matters. Um, but, and also too, it doesn't 
prevent me from having to make flashcards. So, or, you know, actually, you know, doing just more than just reading it. So, that's that. Um, I really don't have anything else to talk about. Um, I got a call from my doctor today. So, this is like nursing video slash personal video. And, um, this might be TMI, but I'm just going to just say it. So, okay, the first time I went to the doctor, they said that I told the doctor I was having, um, I was going to the bathroom all the time, all the time. Like, it'll be just like a little, you know, a little sprinkling and I'll feel like I have to go run to the bathroom because I've been holding it for five hours and, um, and it won't be nothing but just a tiny little bit. And so... He said, well, he didn't know why, but he was like, I'll just go ahead and treat you for a UTI. Okay, great. I went to, um, I took the medicine, went back to the doctor on last time I went. And he's like, well, you know, I, I told you guys, <sighs> excuse me. I told you guys that I talked about, um, um, I told you guys that, oh, about my doctor's update. But, um, I had, they also took a urine sample, I guess, just to see if that medicine worked. Well, I guess it worked. It did work a little bit because I didn't notice a difference. But I got, they called me tonight, which is weird because I didn't know doctor's offices or anywhere stayed open until, you know, 8 o'clock, but they do. And they're like, um, the, she called back and was like, yeah, you have a UTI. I'm like, really? Because I just have medication for a UTI. She's like, well, yeah, that's what your labs show, and um, go pick the medicine up tomorrow. I'll take it two days a week. Really? Okay. That's kind of weird. Like, why am I getting UTIs like that? I guess they're common in pregnant women. I'm not pregnant. And, yeah, I don't know why. But I, so, yeah, so tomorrow I have to go. So what I'm starting to think is that either one, I need to increase my fluid intake. Um, or two, I think when I get treated for one, I think we might be passing it or, you know, I don't know if it's even possible, but maybe like, you know, since, you know, me and my husband, we might be, I get treated for it. He might have one and then give it back to me, but I don't even think that's possible really because urinary tract infection is when... Like, um, there's, like, ureters coming out of your, um, kidneys, and it's like when bacteria get in those, and, um, um, yeah, so, and when, like, okay, a little anatomy here, but, well, okay, I'm not going to explain the female genitalia, but basically when you do your thing, you do, um, it doesn't go into where you go to the bathroom, so I don't understand I mean, it's in that area, in that vicinity, but it doesn't go in that area. Like, it doesn't go in that area. So, yeah, I don't know. But, you know, for a guy, it I don't know. It's all in that same little thing. So, I don't know. I don't know. But it's definitely something to research. A little information just in case, like, anybody else, um, like, uh, have reoccurring UTIs have, re having reoccurring UTIs are not a good thing because they can spread to the kidneys and you don't want to get a kidney infection at all so I don't know just I guess watch out for that I'm going to research it you guys research it somebody let me know if I don't let myself know before you guys let me know but yeah so um, I will do another video uh, probably every day, really, when if I have time or if I'm procrastinating like I'm so good at doing. Um, and yeah, so that's all I have to say. Talk to you guys later.